Hi there and welcome to a video series on angles. In this first video we'll be looking at the role of angles in geometry. We'll explore a whole range of geometry terms and see how angles fits into that. So geometry terms, let's remind ourselves of a few. Okay, a point. Now a point is a dot. It uh, marks the position of something and is normally labelled by a capital letter. So we'd say that one there is the point A. A line, it's normally labelled by two letters uh, through which it passes, two letters of uh, the points through which it passes. So you've got the point X and the point Y there. Now if a line passes through X and Y, we can label it the line XY. And you'll notice you've got arrows at the end of each, uh, each each end of the line there, as indicated by the arrows at each end. Uh, a line in geometry is actually considered to go on indefinitely in both directions. So uh, that's the geometrical idea of a line goes uh, indefinitely in both directions. Now a plane. A plane is a flat two-dimensional surface. I guess like a sheet of paper. Um, but a plane in geometry is considered to go on indefinitely in all four directions as well, as indicated by the red arrows there. So it's like a big sheet of paper that never ends. Collinear points. Now you can see the word line in the word collinear. So it's got something to do with a line and it's got something to do with points. So let's have a look. Points that lie on a single line, a number of points that lie on a single line can be called collinear points. Let's have a look. If X, Y and Z are all individual points, but they all happen to lie on the same line, then we can call those points X, Y and Z, we can call them collinear points. Points of intersection. Now where two lines meet, there's a point of intersection created. Uh, kind of makes sense. Uh, we use the word intersection to um, indicate where two roads meet. So if they're straight line roads, <laughs> I guess that's the same idea. So two uh, lines here, they meet there at uh, the, the red point, And we could label that point Y or any letter really. And we could say that um, the point Y is a point of intersection of those two lines. Another of our geometrical terms, concurrent line. Now, if something happens concurrently, it kind of happens at the same time. So, um, if more than two lines uh, meet at one point, we call them concurrent lines. Um, okay, so here's one line. Here's another line. Now, they've got a point of intersection there, and there's, there's the point in red there. Now, if a third line comes along and crosses at exactly the same point as well, we can call all three lines, we'd say they are concurrent lines. Line segments or line intervals. Okay, part of a line with fixed endpoints that uh, so that the, the section of the line doesn't go on and on forever, it's just one section we're considering. It's known as uh, in two different names. One's called a line segment, another name for it is an interval. Let's have a look. So you can see here that we haven't got any arrows um, at, at either end uh, indicating that it doesn't go on and on forever. We're just considering the section of the line between the points M and N there. So um, we would call that um, either segment MN or interval MN. So that uh, section of the line, that uh, segment or interval is named for the two names of the points at either end there. Ray is a funny sort of a thing. It's uh, sort of part of a line, but um, it's it's got a specific uh, starting point or ending point. So uh, it, it goes indefinitely in one direction. It's better if we see a diagram here. So you can see that it starts or ends at the point C there. It does go through the point D and goes indefinitely off in that right-hand direction. It only starts at C and doesn't go to the left-hand side of C. But uh, yeah, it's kind of like a half a line, I guess. Rays can be named for their end point. So we'll start naming it with the C there, which is kind of like the end point. Um, and uh, it, the name of a ray uh, works involving the letter of a point that it goes through as well. So you can see that it starts at C and goes through D. So we'll call that, we'll name that ray CD there. 
Okay, two rays. If we've got two rays in the one diagram here, when two rays, or two lines for that matter, meet at one point, an angle is formed between them at the point of intersection. And we'll call that point of intersection, in this case, a special name called a vertex. Let's have a look at a diagram. So here's a ray, starting off at that red dot there. And here's another ray. And so they've got uh, what we'd call common starting points there, or common ending points for that matter, depending on how you see it. And so we'll call that common point, the starting point of both of those rays, as the vertex. And we're going to use that vertex name uh, anytime we've got angles, really. And the two rays themselves, they have a special name. They're called the arms of the angle. There's an arm at the top and an arm at the bottom. So you've got an angle created there. The points where the uh, the two rays are starting from is called the vertex each time, and uh, the the line section of the um, of the angle they're called arms, the arms of the angle. Okay, when we're naming angles, we've got to do it in a special way. Angles are named using three points, and we've got to make sure that the vertex name, the letter that's sitting at the vertex, has to be in the middle of the name of the angle. I'll show you an example here. So I've got this angle here. It's got a point A, it's got a point B, and a point C. But one of those points is in a special spot. That B is in the vertex position, and it needs to that letter B has to be in the middle of any name we give this angle. So the above an, above uh, angle could be named the angle ABC, and we could just write it in words there. The angle ABC. Notice uh, in my name here, I've got the B in the middle of the name and that's in the vertex of the angle. Okay, So the vertex, the, the letter for the vertex has to go in the middle of the name or else. We could also call this angle, angle CBA because um, it doesn't really matter what order we put the A and the C in but it desperately matters that that B vertex spot is in the middle of our name. That's the important bit. Then we'll know which angle we're referring to when we've got more than one angle in a diagram. Now there's a special way of writing this as well. We don't have to use the word angle, A-N-G-L-E, each time. There's a special symbol for an angle. So we could write these, these, this angle up here. We could name it angle ABC with the symbol of an angle before the letters A, B and C. Or we could write the angle symbol and then CBA after it. So the important thing, let me recap again here, that the vertex letter, B in this case, has to go in the middle of the name. Okay, parallel lines. There are two lines that never meet. Let's have a look at a diagram here. These are arrows in the middle of our, um, our diagram here. They indicate that uh, they're, they're parallel arrows there. Um, and especially when there's two of them, a couple of, uh, a couple of arrows paired off there. So that uh, indicates that they are parallel lines. They're a bit like train tracks. They'll never meet each other. The above lines are parallel. Now, we can just say in words, the line MN is parallel to the line OP, nothing wrong with that. There is a special symbol we can use though, and we can also write it like this, MN, and that's a parallel symbol in there, two lines like that um, vertically next to each other, that's a parallel symbol. So we'd say those, that those two lines vertically there are kind of replacing the word, the words is parallel to. So that's the symbolic way, this using symbols, the symbol way of um, writing MN is parallel to OP. We've also got perpendicular lines. Now perpendicular lines are indicated in the diagram here. You've got a 90 degree created by the intersection of those at the at the intersection of those two lines there. So the above lines are perpendicular to each other, we would say. Uh, that means the the lines are at 90 degrees to each other as indicated by that right angle symbol. And you can also write it using a, a special symbol for the words is perpendicular to. So that's that symbol there. It's got a vertical bit and a flat bit at the bottom. So that's how we can write it using a symbol that the line WX is perpendicular to the line YZ. Now we're going to have a look at the markings that we can we can see on many geometrical diagrams. These come in the questions that we are given in our textbook often and they tell us a lot about the diagram, all about the characteristics of the diagram really. So anytime there's symbols here we should take a fair bit of notice of them. Okay let's uh, check it out. 
Now I've highlighted two of these in red, the markings there on the on the interval MN and the interval OP there. And if there's one marking on each of those lines, we can trust that uh, that MN, the interval MN, equals the interval OP. They've both got one marking on there, so that indicates they're the same uh, length as each other. Okay, the red ones uh, that we've highlighted here, they're, they're, they're two lines together um, on NP and MO, and because there's two lines on each of them, that indicates that uh, they're the same length as each other. So this, these two lines on each of those two intervals there indicate that the interval NP is the same length as the interval OM. Now, let's keep this clear here, let's just clarify. If this has got, uh, if, if MN has one uh, marking and NP has two markings, then they're not going to be the same length as each other. But the, one, the, the pair that has the one marking are the same length as each other, and the pairs that have the two markings, they're the same length as each other. Okay, you notice got, we've got some angle uh, markings here. The angle up up the top of our diagram has one curved marking and the angle down the bottom of our diagram has one curved marking. Now we can trust that as well. If they've both got one curved marking each, then those red markings show us that the angle MNP, MNP, remember we name an angle for the vertex, so the N is in the middle, so that's the one we're talking about up the top there. That angle there equals that angle at the bottom there, MOP. And remember, and once again, of uh, the, the vertex of that angle we mean down the bottom here has an O next to it, and that occurs in the middle of our naming of that angle, MOP. Okay, so they've both got one marking on each of those angles, so we can trust that they're the same size angle as each other. And let's have a look at the others. Uh, we've got an angle on the right-hand side, an angle on the left-hand side. Notice they've got two markings. So they're equal to each other, but they can't be equal to uh, any angle that's only got one marking on it. So these two ones that we've shown here in red, the angle NMO, this one on the left-hand side, that names, uh, is equal to the angle OPN, which is that right-hand one there. Okay, so those markings are pretty important and uh, a few markings on the diagram can tell us a whole heap about uh, the characteristics of a geometrical shape, so it's good for us to take notice of that. Alright, so, so far in this, uh, in this video, just to recap uh, on the whole video here, we've got angles, but we've got We've uh, run through a whole lot, heap of uh, geometrical terms to um, to just see where angles fit into the whole thing. Let's see what terms we've run through. We've we've learnt about points. We've learnt about lines and how to name them. We've talked about planes, collinear points, points of intersection, concurrent lines, segments, otherwise known as intervals. We've talked about rays and how angles are formed. Angles are really two uh, rays that happen to have the same starting point or ending point. We've talked about parallel lines and how uh, we can express that in a symbol form. We've talked about perpendicular lines and how we can write that out. And we've had a look at all the markings that we can find on, or some of the markings that we can find on geometrical diagrams and what they mean for us. So I hope that helps. That's a good starting point to our angles video series. And uh, we'll see you next time for some more on angles. Thanks for listening. And remember, there are some great videos uh, that you can watch um, to get all the skills you need in mathematics at peterblakemaths.com. Check it out. See you next time.